Hey guys, how are you all doing? Welcome to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto married with Sakura and had a child, part 1. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Sam Swordsman 123. Subscribe if you enjoy the video. Let's start the story. Sakura helped Kakashi, as they both made their way to the Valley of the End. As she did so, she thought back to her last memory before waking up. Sasuke declaring his goal of revolution, and her begging him to stop, only to be hit with out of him piercing her chest. She'd professed her love, poured her heart out in an attempt to change his mind, and he'd just casually done that to her. Sakura sighed. Enough was enough. She'd held on to him for so long, and he'd only gotten further and further away. This love was killing her inside. It was time to let it go. Sasuke clearly wasn't interested in her since he'd rejected her and tried to kill her twice each. That was not someone that deserved her love anymore. She looked over the ledge and saw them laying there on the ground. Naruto and Sasuke, both of whom had lost an arm. Naruto to his right and Sasuke to his left, blood soaked out from their elbows, creating a trail that looked as though they were holding hands. Sakura leapt down and ran to her teammates, immediately healing them to stop the bleeding. That's great Sakura. Naruto said, looking at her with a bruise-covered face. Sakura, Sasuke spoke. Don't talk to Sasuke. I need to concentrate, the pink-haired medical ninja said. Sasuke waited a moment then said, I'm sorry. Sorry? She asked. For what? Everything, the last Ichi has said. She looked at him with teary eyes, but then steeled herself. I'm glad you're back now Sasuke. But after all you've done I can't hold on to this love I have for you anymore. You tried to kill me. Twice. Thrice if you count that time in Orochimaru's hideout. I poured my heart out to you to get you to stop. But I just got knocked out both times. I can't do this anymore Sasuke. Ugh. If you weren't so bruised already, I'd give you a hell of a beatdown. Sakura finished her work as the bleeding arm stopped. She then turned to Naruto, wanting to hit him as well, but seeing him already in so much pain she couldn't bring herself to do it. She raised her fist as Naruto sat up with a smile. He made a scared expression as he prepared himself for a conk on the head. But instead she hit the ground between them. You idiots. Both of you. She wept and then threw her arms around Naruto. Sakura, he said. Thank you, Naruto, she said through her tears. Huh? For what? He asked. She chuckled softly while still weeping. You idiot. You brought Sasuke back to me. Yeah. Guess I did. Though I wasn't expecting that. He said. Well it's not like I deserve her after all I've done, Sasuke said. Sakura broke away for a moment and her tears intensified upon looking at Naruto's destroyed arm. I can't believe you'd go so far for me. She said before sobbing harder into his chest. Naruto put his remaining hand on her back to comfort her. It's okay Sakura. Everything will be okay. She released him from the second hug and saw his foxy grin. She smiled back at him through her tears and then glanced over at Sasuke, who was giving a pained smile as well. Bakashi watched his team all reunited with a smile under his mask. He's finally back. Well, I guess we still need to undo the infinite. Naruto said. He and Sasuke used their good arms to form a hand seal and everything went back to normal. Almost. They made their way back to the Hidden Leaf Village, where Sasuke was put in prison with a medic to watch him, as well as a seal over his eyes. Naruto was put in the hospital to recover. Though he managed to attend Niji's funeral and stand by Hinata's side, it took a few weeks for all the damage to heal. Kurama had used so much chakra in the battle with Sasuke that Naruto's healing was no different than a normal person. Sakura would visit him almost every day. Finally, the time came when Sasuke, well, got to be honest with you. Under normal circumstances you'd be imprisoned for life, Kakashi Haddock, now the sixth Okage said. But since you helped defeat Madara and Kagaya, as well as dispel the infinite Tsukiyomi, Naruto, and I were able to put a good word together. Just don't go crazy on me. Cause if you do they're gonna hold me responsible. Right, sorry. Sasuke apologized. Sakura looked at her friend. You're sure you're leaving? It won't be for long, Sasuke assured her. I just need some time to figure things out. Now that I'm not an Avenger anymore, what am I? I need to find out for myself. I promise to come back in a few months. Besides, you said you weren't in love with me anymore. Sakura looked down. That doesn't mean I don't care about you anymore, Sasuke. I'm grateful to you for that, he said. Thank you for everything. I hope everything works well between you and Naruto. Sakura blushed at that. You love him, don't you? Sasuke asked. She nodded, her blush deepening. For so long I was confused about my feelings for him. I was torn between him and you. Well he's always been there for you while I kept pushing you away, Sasuke said. You should tell him how you feel. I did, Sakura told him. In the land of iron, I said I loved him, but he said I was lying to myself. Were you? Sasuke asked. Well I did tell him that I'd forgotten about you. That was a lie. 
I was still in love with you during that time, and not letting go. But I loved Naruto too. Well good luck. The idiot could use a smart girl like you, Sasuke said. She giggled. Bye Sasuke. Be back soon. I will. Take care of yourself, Sakura. And the last Ichiha walked off down the path, he hadn't gotten more than a few steps when Naruto stepped out of his hiding place. Sakura sweat dropped, as she had a feeling he'd heard the whole thing. Didn't think you'd be here to see me off, Sasuke said. Nah. I just came to give you this, Naruto said, as he reached into his pocket. He drew Sasuke's old headband. It still had the scratch on it from their first battle in the Valley of the End. Thanks. We'll see you Naruto. She's all yours now. Take care of her, Sasuke said. Even if it's me going after her. Naruto grinned. Don't worry. She's in good hands. Or at least a hand. Sasuke nodded and continued on before disappearing into the forest of leaves. Sakura stood there watching him then gazed at Naruto. Kakashi smiled with his eyes, both of which were now visible, as he had a new headband that he kept on normally rather than as an eye patch. I leave you two alone, he said. Sakura blushed as she walked over to Naruto. So I guess you heard all that. She asked. Yeah. She sniggered. If I'd known you were there, I wouldn't have said that you were an idiot. Naruto just smiled. Hey have I ever told you that you have a large charming forehead? He asked. Sakura looked at him and was stunned as his head came closer to hers, his lips touched her forehead. Inside her head, she remembered the day they had come together as Team 7. When she and Sasuke sat on the bench, he'd said those words to her. But Sasuke never acted the same way again. It was you. You were transformed as Sasuke that day. She said. Yeah. Sakura, Naruto hesitated, the words catching in his throat. I I love you. I always have. You're the only girl I could ever see myself spending the rest of my life with. Her green eyes widened as they looked into his blue ones. Naruto, Sakura were astounded at the conviction in her teammate's voice. For a moment they stood there, Naruto thinking she was gonna reject him. Then before she knew what she was doing, Sakura slowly stepped forward, wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck, and kissed him on the lips. Naruto stood stunned for a moment, but he swiftly returned the kiss from his dream girl. For a while they remained like that. Then they broke apart. I love you too Naruto, Sakura said with a teary smile. And I mean it sincerely. I wasn't completely truthful in the land of iron. I was still holding on to Sasuke, but I also loved you. I know Sakura, Naruto said. It's alright. You're the only one for me. I know that now, Sakura said, grasping Naruto's remaining hand. After all, we've been through it together. You've become the light when things grow dark. You've protected me so many times and been there for me when I was down. You mean the world to me. Also I'm sorry for being so mean to you back in the old days. I had Sasuke high up in the stars and you had to work your way up from the bottom of the earth. That's okay. I mean I am an idiot after all. You're the idiot I fell in love with, Sakura said, as she gave him a light playful smack on the head and then a peck on the cheek. Naruto chuckled. So does this mean we're together? Sakura nodded. Of course, Naruto. Wahoo. Naruto leapt for joy. Their new lives together were about to begin. Naruto walked with Sakura to Ichiraku Raymon. The village was mostly rebuilt now after all the damage that it had suffered from Pain's invasion. Naruto passed through the short curtains outside as he entered the shop. I'm back. He shouted. Gucci and AM both stood there with open mouths at their favorite customer, whom they hadn't seen in over a month. Well, Naruto. Good to see you. The Raymond maker dad said. Oh, Naruto. We were worried when you left that we weren't gonna see you Ag AM trailed off. Her hands went to her mouth. Your arm. Naruto realized he tried waving with his destroyed arm, which caused the limp sleeve below the elbow to fall down. Oh don't worry AM. Granny Tsunade is working on making me a new arm with the cells of the first Hokage or something, Naruto said. I'll be good, as new. AM took a moment to get over her shock. Alright, but it's still sad to know you lost an arm. Well, what will it be? Tuchi asked. A large bowl of Mizo pork ramen. Naruto pulled out his frog-shaped wallet and popped the mouth, only to discover it was empty. I don't have Ryo left. Naruto screamed. What? Sakura yelled. Hey this was your idea for our first real date as a couple. Wait what? You guys are together now? AM asked. Yeah. We just got together a little while ago. Naruto said. Yes, Sakura agreed with a nod, blushing. Well well you finally got your dream girl Naruto. I say we can let this one be in the house. Tuchi said. In fact, since word going around the entire village is that you pretty much saved the world. Let's make the next three bowls free. Are you serious Naruto exclaimed. Yeah. Best day ever. Sakura smiled. I guess the only thing better than Raymond would be free Raymond, she said. You don't get your Raymond free. Am said. She waited a second, then laughed at the look on Sakura's face. Gotcha. Haha very funny Am. Sakura giggled. The new couple sat down. 
They'd been on dates before together, but this was the first time, as a couple. Sakura felt the urge to grasp Naruto's hand, but hesitated in nervousness. Unfortunately, as she saw his right arm next to her she realized she couldn't hold it from that side. Pity. Alright, give me three bowls of ramen. Two for me, and one for Sakura. Naruto said. Humming right up Naruto. A.M. promised, as she got to work. Sakura smiled, as she looked forward to the ramen, but then a thought occurred to her. Hold on. Naruto, you can't hold your chopsticks. Naruto gasped, as he realized she was right. His good arm was gone for now. Sakura blushed. I guess I have to feed you. Naruto looked at her. He remembered that time months ago after he'd first made the Rasen Shuriken and been injured by its imperfect close-range attack. Sakura had first offered to feed him, then Sai offered, and finally Kakashi was the one that did it. Have it come one bowl at a time please Sakura said. The waitress nodded. Naruto and Sakura waited for the first bowl, when it arrived Sakura fed Naruto with one set of chopsticks, then used a second set to feed herself. She ate much slower than Naruto, so he made weird faces at her whenever she took too long. Hey Sakura, hurry up or the ramen will get cold. She growled. If we're going to be dating, you're gonna let me eat as fast I want or you can eat it off the ground. Naruto shivered. Sorry ma'am. They repeated the process with the next two bowls. Though by the end of the second bowl Sakura was full so Naruto didn't have to wait anymore to his relief. Sakura stuck the ramen in his mouth with a smile. You owe me for this, Naruto. Sakura said. Sure thing Sakura. Whatever you want, name it. She grinned a bit evilly. I think I'll wait till just the right time to take you up on that. Naruto shivered again. Why do you always scare me? They exited the Raymond stand then faced each other. Well, I'll see you tomorrow at Hokage's house. Kakashi sensei said he wanted us to be down there tomorrow morning. Right. Later Sakura. They slowly kissed one more time, still a little nervous about the whole together couple thing. Then split up to go to their own homes. As they walked away though, they failed to notice a pretty raven-haired Kinoichi nearby. Tears ran down the cheeks of Hinata Hayaga at the sight of her longtime crush kissing another woman. She wept and ran home. Naruto woke the next morning and got dressed after a quick breakfast. It was difficult to feed himself with only one arm, but he managed to open a milk carton in his apartment with his teeth. Good thing the milk didn't expire after all the time Naruto had been away. It was close though. I need to get more food, Naruto said. But to do that I need Ryo, which I'm out of. And to earn Ryo I have to go on missions which I can't do till I get a new arm from Granny Tsunade. Naruto sighed. He drank his milk and ate some food that was still good. Carrots and other vegetables were his least favorite foods, but they had helped him grow bigger these past few years. He ate them with only a slight frown, wishing they were Raymond. He then exited his house which had been one of the first buildings rebuilt after Pain's invasion, as he'd been the hero who stopped the Akatsuki leader. Naruto made his way to the tower, only to find a surprise. A large group of people were gathered outside there. Naruto. 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 The residents of the Leaf Village chanted. Naruto grinned. Just five years ago they'd all hated him for being the vessel of the nine-tailed fox, but now they loved him. Naruto over here. A familiar voice called. Sakura stood waving at him near the entrance to the Hokage house. Kakashi and Aruka sensei both stood behind here along with the leaf. Naruto walked through the crowd of shinobi and citizens. He soon stood before the new Hokage at Sakura's side. Naruto Uzumaki, it is all thanks to you that we are still free and not trapped in a world. You are a hero to not only the leaf village now, but the entire world. You are no longer qualified to be called a genin or even. Naruto took in the words. He wasn't going to be a genin anymore. But if he wasn't going to be either, then the rank above that, I'm gonna be a jonin. Naruto asked, awestruck. The Kashi smiled. That is the highest rank normally. But I've spoken with Lady Tsunade and the elders, and they have agreed to allow you to bear an even greater title. Along with Sasuke and Sakura that is. After all, the three of you were the ones that saved the world. Naruto looked at Sakura. A title above what's that? What were your teachers all called? Kakashi asked. Sanin. Naruto's eyes widened. Well the title was given to Jiraiya, Orochimaru, and Tsunade by Hanzo, it marked them, as above the rest of the shinobi. As the students of each of those three, and the ones who saved the world from Madara and Kagaya, it is only fitting that you three inherit the same titles as your teachers, Kakashi said. Naruto, Sakura, you both will be known as Sanin from this day forward. As will Sasuke, though since he's not here I'll be sending that news to him by messenger hawk. Naruto gasped. Mia Sanin. Wow. Never thought this would happen. Let's see, the pervy sage called himself the toad sage. Maybe I should call myself the fox sage. There were several chuckles in the crowd. That does seem fitting to Naruto. But you'll always be the number one unpredictable knucklehead ninja to me, Kakashi said. But what about you Kakashi sensei? Naruto asked. I'm Hokage now, that was my reward, Kakashi said. 
And I've got a lot of paperwork to fill out. Seems more like a punishment. Also, there is one more reward for both of you, as well, Kakashi continued. As saviors of the world, we've all been gifted with 25 million Ryo. Two carts full of cash cases were brought out from the Hokage house. Naruto almost dropped dead there. 25 million. He repeated. Wow, I'm set for life. And you'll be getting more in about a year, Kakashi whispered in Naruto's ear. You are the son of the fourth Hokage after all. Naruto couldn't stop grinning. Sakura took his hand. Well guess we're both just a step below the Hokage now. Yeah, Naruto said. They turned and faced a front row which consisted of their friends, the other teams they had graduated with in the academy so long ago. All of them saw their two friends holding hands and knew what it meant, like an unspoken announcement. Team Asuma, Shikamaru, Chaji, and Ino all grinned at them happily. Team Guy, who'd lost Niji in the war and was now compassed of Lee, Tenten, and their wheelchair-bound sensei Mike Guy. Team Kurinai, Shino, Kiba, and Hinata who were looking longingly at Naruto. Naruto saw her eyes and he suddenly remembered what she'd said to him during Pain's invasion. He would need to have a talk with her. He also noticed Kiba's slight frown as he looked at Naruto and Sakura holding hands while Shino's expression was completely hidden by his jacket and eyes. After securing his money in the rebuilt Hidden Leaf Ninja Bank where the shinobi in the village kept their well-earned Ryo from the war, Naruto sat in his chair and let out a sigh. He'd been in that line for a long time as many others had gotten rewards that they were depositing. But everything was working out for him now. Soon he'd be getting a new arm, he was a Sanin, the war was over, and he'd gotten Sasuke back. Even if Sasuke had left again he was back on the right path. There was still just one problem left though, and her name was Hinata. Naruto sighed as he recalled her words when she stood against pain. She'd always been nice to him, but he'd never liked her that way. He'd held her hand after Niji's death and she'd given him the will to continue fighting when he'd been about to lose hope. He cared about her, as a friend, she'd been the only girl in the academy to be nice to him. He only hoped that she would understand. He had to talk with her, he knew. Naruto stood still for a moment and his eyelids turned orange and his pupils toad-like as he entered sage mode. With it, he could detect the chakra of practically everyone in the Hidden Leaf Village. Locating Hinata, Naruto took off. With his enhanced speed he was there in three minutes at the Hyuga compound. The clan members saw him and went inside to inform Hinata. She emerged a moment later. Oh Naruto, she said, cheeks turning red. Hey Hinata, Naruto greeted me with a smile. So why are you here? Hinata asked. I need to talk to you. Oh. Alright, she said, coming out. Would you like to take a walk? Yeah, he said. They walked around the outside of the compound. So what do you need to talk about? Hinata asked, though she had a good idea. Naruto's face scrunched. Well it's about you, me, and Sakura. Oh. Sakura and I are together now, Naruto went on. I know. I saw you two last night, Hinata said with a cracking voice. Naruto looked at her and saw the tears forming. He hated seeing her cry. I'm sorry. Back when Nagato attacked the leaf you said you loved me, Naruto said. She nodded. Yes. Look Hinata, I'm flattered, but my heart belongs to Sakura, Naruto told her. I know, Hinata said with a sniffle. I had a feeling that it might happen sooner or later, given how much time you two were spending together. She is special to you. Yeah. But Hinata you're a special person to me, as well. Not in the same way, but you always believed in me. Even back in the academy when I was the dead last, Naruto said. I hope that we can still be friends at least. Of course Naruto, she said, as she threw her arms around him. I wish you the best with Sakura. He could tell she was crying, he patted her head to try and comfort her. Thanks Hinata. I'm sure that there is someone out there for you. Underneath the Hidden Leaf Village, a group of shinobi in Anbu uniforms and masks stood assembled. Unlike normal Anbu they carried tantos instead of katanas. They were Root, the organization founded by Danzo. People of the Leaf thought that this faction disbanded after Danzo's death, technically it was true, as their assignment had been to serve Danzo in his dark ways of protecting the Hidden Leaf Village. Their new leader stood in the shadows. You were all part of Danzo's faction, he is gone. But his killer is still at large, the leader said from the shadows. Sasuke Chiha has escaped justice, thanks to that fool Naruto Uzumaki. We cannot allow him to live. He has turned on the village once, and once a traitor, always a traitor. This peace that is formed between the nations cannot last. The teachings of the third Hokage have made this village weak and nearly destroyed us. We must finish what Danzo started. Yes sir. The gathered members of the reborn route said. I assign you two to go and meet with these members of the Hidden Cloud, the leader stated. I hear they lost family members there when Sasuke Chiha attacked. He handed the two root members a few pieces of paper. Then turned to the next pair. And you two will go to the Land of Iron, locate any samurai that might have a grudge against Sasuke. Tell them we are willing to help them eliminate him. Sir. The root leader looked at his masked accomplices. 
My lord, if I may advise you. I don't know if we will be able to defeat Sasuke. Now he has not only the Manjuku Sharingan, but the Rinnegan, as well in his left eye. I'm aware of that. But we may soon have a Rinnegan of our own. Tsunade worked intensely in her lab, the body of Madara Ichiha in front of her. After retiring from the office of Hokage, she was now able to devote her time to medical ninjutsu. Soon she would be able to use the cells of her grandfather that Madara had had on his body to create new artificial limbs, like the one Danzo had. Nearby in a pair of chemical-filled canisters were Madara's eyes, the eyes that possessed the Rinnegan. Those were dangerous eyes she knew, but the chance to study them was simply too much to pass up. Naruto had to lay low for a while. A few days had passed since he talked with Hinata, and he could barely go anywhere in the Leaf Village without being swarmed by his fans. First he'd become the hero of the Leaf Village after defeating Nagato, now he was the hero of the entire world. People from all over, even from other hidden villages, were trying to get into the Leaf to meet him. If only he had his other arm still he could have made shadow clones to distract them. But until Granny Tsunade got his new prosthetic arm made from the cells of her grandfather, he wouldn't be able to do any that required hand seals. And until that happened he wouldn't be able to go on missions. At least he didn't have to worry about money with his big reward. But it would be boring if he could never go on any missions again. He walked the streets of the Hidden Leaf. Everywhere he went people waved at him and smiled, some even offered him gifts. Naruto please take this chocolate. Wow you're Naruto Uzumaki. Oh my god. I hope whoever took your arm pays. And I get your autograph for my kid, he's your biggest fan. Naruto chuckled sheepishly. Everyone here and even people from far away adored him. He accepted some of the gifts, with a generous villager or two helping to carry them, since Naruto couldn't do it with only one arm. Naruto apologized to the one who requested an autograph, as he'd lost his dominant right arm. But clumsily tried to write with his left hand. He signed his name in a sloppy manner. Still, the villager was grateful and smiled at Naruto who handed him back the paper with a grin. He walked through the village more, remembering how only tens years ago just about everyone in the village despised him, with the exception of the third Hokage and Aruka sensei Naruto was glad he had changed everyone's perspective of him, but wished for a bit less attention. Everyone acknowledged him now. He threw his hands behind his head and grinned. Looks like the seat will be as good as mine someday. Yeah, boss. A voice called. Naruto looked over his shoulder and saw a familiar face with a very long scarf around his neck. Oh hey Kanohimaru. Naruto greeted his young friend, who was something like a little brother to him. Kanohimaru was a small kid, the grandson of the third Hokage. He, like Naruto in his childhood, had yearned to be acknowledged for who he was. Everyone else had just called him the honorable grandson. But Naruto acknowledged him as Kanohimaru, and both of them had declared themselves as rivals. Not unlike with Sasuke, though Kanohimaru was nicer and funner. His teammates Mogi and Yudin were with him as well. I always thought you would be the sixth Hokage. Kanohimaru said. Guess I was wrong. Well we'll see if I can beat you to the title yet. I vowed I was gonna be the seventh Hokage. Oh, did you know? Naruto said. Well you're on. Hanohimaru grinned. Well since you only got one arm maybe I'll stand a chance. Now don't get carried away Kanohimaru. We already had to rebuild the village after Pain's attack. Mogi said. Don't worry, I'll just be doing some tojutsu with the boss. Kanohimaru said. Maybe now I can actually win. We'll see about that. Naruto said. I haven't had the chance to fight in weeks. This should be good. The two villagers that were helping carry Naruto things stepped off to the side. Wow, we're actually gonna be able to see Naruto Uzumaki fight. One of them shouted in excitement. Naruto is fighting. A woman passing by said. Naruto is fighting. This drew a large crowd that watched. Fight. 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 They called. Naruto smiled at his friend and rival. Okay Kanohimaru. I agree we should just do tojutsu. Don't need any buildings destroyed right now. We'll do contests when I get myself a new arm. You got it boss. Kanohimaru agreed. I already beat you in the Chunin exams anyway. Naruto blushed in embarrassment as he recalled breaking the rules of not using special chakra like sage mode or tailed beasts. Well I was going all out. You always have to give it your all. Naruto said. But I guess using sage mode was a bit overkill. Naruto charged. Just like their match in the exam, Kanohimaru was pummeling multiple times and got back up. Even with one arm, Naruto was still a far superior to Jutsu user. Still Kanemaru refused to give up and got bruised really badly. Then a figure walked up. Okay that's enough. Naruto wins this one. Shikamaru emerged from the crowd. Man what a drag, you are always the center of attention. I had to push through a huge crowd to get here. Yeah. Well, good job Kanohimaru. Naruto said. The recently promoted Chunin grinned through his bruised face. I'll beat you fair and square someday boss. Do you think you could teach me another sometime? He asked. Yeah when I get a new weight. 
I might be able to teach you something now. Naruto lead Konohimaru to his house. The villagers that helped Naruto with his gifts set them on a table and left. Naruto rummaged through his closet until he found what he was looking for. A scroll that served as the contract for summoning toads. After Jiraiya's death, Naruto had been entrusted with the contract scroll for new summoners to use. This is the contract to summon toads from Mount Mayaboku, Naruto explained. Konohimaru grinned as he remembered Naruto using giant toads in the battle against pain. He signed the contract. Thanks big brother Naruto. Naruto smiled. They walked back outside and Naruto found another rival waiting for him. Kiba Inuzuka was looking at him with a frown. His loyal ninja hound Akamaru by his side. Oh hey Kiba, Akamaru, Naruto said. What's up? Kiba growled. Naruto. I can't believe you rejected Hinata. Naruto recoiled at the force of the ninja hound user's voice. Hey. I'm dating Sakura now. Naruto told him. Hinata has liked you since the beginning. Kiba roared. Naruto felt his heart tear a little. I'm sorry, but I never felt that way about her. Kiba growled. She is a great girl. Kind, beautiful, she always thinks of others before herself, remember how she gave both of us ointment after our match in the Chunin exams. And she's had to deal with a lot of her father's crap. He labeled her a failure because he thought she was too weak. But she stood up to pain to protect you, remember? Naruto nodded. I remember that Kiba. She's always been a good friend. But my heart belongs to Sakura, and I'm with her now. But from the way you're talking you sound like you might like her. Kiba turned red. Me? And Hinata? No way. Naruto shrugged. Well I know you're close friends with her at least. She might need you to help her now. I don't want her to be in pain any longer than she has to. Kiba wasn't pleased. He'd hoped that he might have been able to get Naruto to dump Sakura for Hinata so that his teammate could have her lifelong dream. He tried to support her in her dream. But that wasn't likely now unless Naruto broke up with Sakura. But Naruto's words made him wonder did he like Hinata. He had just said that he thought she was great. She had a great body and was kind and had a strong will hidden under the shy surface. Still, the idiot Naruto was right. Hinata needed someone to be there for right now, and he was her teammate. Her father Hiyashi did care about her, though he wasn't one to comfort someone. I'll do my best to take care of her, Kiba said. Oh, and I heard you had a fight with Konohimaru today. That's right. The kid said. One of us is going to be one someday. Kiba's frown intensified. Not if I get it first. Konohimaru smirked. Yeah right, like you'll ever catch up with big brother Naruto. Both he and Naruto laughed. Kiba glared at them. Growling he stomped off. As he did so, he knew he wasn't strong enough to beat Naruto, who had just learned one powerful after another, Sage Mode, the Nine Tails Chakra. How was Kiba gonna beat that? It had always been his dream to be. What if he couldn't? After walking for a few minutes and fuming, Kiba felt Akamaru press against him. I'm okay Akamaru. Just thinking, Kiba said, stroking the white dog. Maybe I can't become Hokage. What do I do then? The dog whined. Kiba understood it though. Yeah, for now we just need to focus on being there for Hinata. Days passed in the leaf, then weeks. Finally Naruto had a new arm. He'd just woken up from the surgery. The first thing he saw was Sakura as she sat in the chair next to him. She'd fallen asleep from the dark room it was clearly night outside the leaf. Naruto smiled at the sight of his girlfriend before sitting up and flexing his fingers. Oh yeah. Naruto Uzumaki is back. Naruto shouted. Naruto. He shivered, looking at Sakura's beautiful emeralds narrowed in annoyance. She raised a fist. And Naruto got a hard hit on the head that knocked him out till morning. With his new arm, Naruto was able to go on missions again. That livened things up for him during the next few months. Unfortunately with how strong he'd gotten, most rogue ninja couldn't even hope to stand up to him. The Akatsuki were gone, so now it was like A-class missions had become dull, as D-class missions. Fortunately, he got one that sounded much more dangerous. Negotiating with one of the Hidden Leaf's former greatest threats. I must say, I never would have seen myself sending you to negotiate with him, Kakashi said, as he looked at Naruto in his office. Yeah I wasn't much of the negotiating type back when we first formed Team 7, Naruto said. Remember, don't start any fights. Just talk with him and try to make a deal so that our villages can be at peace, Kakashi said. Right, Naruto said. He headed to the village gate. Alright. Now we're talking. S-class mission. He raised a triumphant fist. With that, he set out, jogging, and then leaping into the trees. Even though he was really wealthy now, as the great hero who'd ended the war and stopped Madara and Kagaya, he didn't want to stop going on missions. It would get boring just sitting around the house and staying in the village all the time. Are you going to use my chakra or sage to deal with this, Naruto? A voice said. The Naruto subconscious, he came face to face with Kurama after a long time. The fox was back to the form Naruto remembered, rather than the darker one that was the manifestation of its other half of chakra. 
Now, Naruto's nine tails might be even more powerful. Nah, no, it'd be too easy. I'll only use your chakra or sage mode if I have to, Naruto said to the fox. He received a toothy grin in return. But boy. But with who the people you're going to meet are, you would probably have to use it. Yeah probably, Naruto said. Naruto walked through the forest until he finally reached his destination. Hirachimaru's new lair. Like the others it had a snake statue outside. The snake San and himself, as well as Kabuto, stood outside. Naruto, welcome, Hirachimaru said. Naruto hesitated. The last time he'd really seen Hirachimaru had been when he'd been trying to get Sasuke back. He had never expected that one day they would be meeting to speak of the possibility of peace between their own nations. Hirachimaru, he greeted with a nod. Kabuto. Just in time to join us for tea, Kabuto said. They lead him inside to a table with a teapot on it. As he sat down, Naruto let just a little of Kurama's chakra go into his head so that he could sense their intentions. He felt no malice or hidden killing intent whatsoever. I must say I never imagined you would come as far as you have, Hirachimaru said. Back five years ago you were a hopeless genin with little natural talent. Jiraiya would be proud. Naruto forced a smile and sipped his tea. Poison might have worked on him a couple times, but there was no poison. Even if it had been, Naruto would have recovered from it thanks to his control over Kurama's chakra. Though it might have at least left him a vulnerable target. I never imagined that you would one day be wishing to make peace with us, Naruto said. Well much has happened. I was sealed away twice, once into Sasuke and then into that near nothingness by Itachi. Besides, I can't hope to compete against Sasuke or you anymore, Hirachimaru said. I may still conduct some experiments. But believe me I truly intend to become a better person. Naruto wouldn't have believed him if not for being able to sense dark emotions and malice. There was none from Orochimaru. Two years ago I wanted to kill you, Naruto admitted. Amazing how things can change. You're right, a lot has happened. After I lost Jiraiya, I battled pain and confronted him. I swore I'd put a stop to all this hatred. Alright, I guess we can start by welcoming your nation's ninja back into the fold. Though I think it might be best if you stay away from the village. I mean a lot of people lost their relatives during the invasion of the leaf by the sound. And you also killed the third Hokage. Everyone looked up to him, including me. Naruto couldn't help but narrow his eyes at Orochimaru whose casual smile lessened a bit. Yes I believe you are right Naruto. Very well, I shall be working to rebuild the sound ninjas. But this time, we will be allies of the leaf. Oh, and Kakashi Sensei, the Hokage, would like to have a shinobi from our village come by every now and then to keep an eye on you, just to make sure. Orochimaru hesitated. And I presume if something happens to this shinobi or you do not hear from him, then it will mean we are at war with the leaf again. Naruto nodded. Very well, Orochimaru agreed. I accept these terms. Though I may still be performing some experiments to acquire immortality, I will be doing so in a more humane way now. Alright. As long as you cause any trouble for us or the other nations, Naruto said. What about you Caputo? The other snake man shrugged. Well, I want to make up for some of the things I've done. Perhaps I'll go to another land and create an orphanage. A lot of kids probably lost their parents in the war and it is my fault. Naruto managed to smile at those words. Both of those two had certainly become better people. Once, Naruto had considered Kabuto a friend. It had been a shock to find out that had been an act all along. But maybe now, they could really be friends. After all, Naruto had forgiven Sasuke for everything he'd done. Though that might have been because they were best friends that had been real. Naruto got up and left, his mission complete. Negotiation hardly had the thrill of battles, but he knew the Kakashi had sent him because he was perhaps one of the only ninja who could certainly defeat the Sanin if it came to an attack. He made his way outside of the hideout, not wanting to spend any more time in the company of those two than was necessary. He went to a nearby village where he rented a room for the night and had some noodles. He then headed off to bed. After awakening the next day, Naruto returned to the village in the late morning and received a pleasant surprise. Naruto. Naruto looked at the sight. His girlfriend was making her way towards him. She threw her arms around him and kissed him heavily. Naruto returned the kiss and smiled at her. How was the meeting? Did he try anything? Sakura asked. Nope. He seemed pretty sincere based on what I felt with Kurama's chakra, Naruto said. Naruto. Naruto looked in the direction of the voice. He grinned at its source, his best friend. Sasuke. Naruto exclaimed. You're back. Sasuke had on a blue shirt like the one he'd worn during their early days in Team 7. He even wore his old headband with a scratch on it. He looked almost the same as back then except for being taller. Yeah he just came back about an hour ago. Sakura said. I said I'd be back in a few months, Sasuke said. I see you got a new arm. Yeah. You could probably get one too, Naruto said. Maybe, but I think I'm strong enough with just one arm, Sasuke said. I've learned to do hand signs one-handed, I'm fine. 
Sakura smiled at her friend, he was still, as strong, as ever. Even now she couldn't help but be impressed by him. She forced herself to look away, she was Naruto's now. Forever. This village is certainly different from how it used to be, Sasuke said looking around. Naruto noticed that many of the villagers were eyeing both him and Sasuke. Many smiled at him, but others glared at Sasuke. Yeah, we had to rebuild the village after Pain attacked. There was a moment of silence. Come walk with me, Sasuke asked. He led them to the spot where his family home was or where it should have been. But that was a long time ago. That building had been reduced to rubble with the rest of the village during Pain's attack. The Ichiha house is gone huh? Sasuke said. Yeah, Sakura said. I'm sorry you don't have a home to come back to now. No, Sasuke said. My home is with you too. He smiled at them. A warm, sincere smile. Team 7 all grinned at each other, and Naruto put his arms around each of them. Sasuke looked at where his old house used to be. But now a new house was in its place. Perhaps if I'd come back after defeating Itachi, I could have prevented this, Sasuke said. Well, no use dwelling on the past anymore. Time to lay it to rest. But don't forget it, right? Naruto asked. Never, Sasuke said. He now leads them to the village cemetery after getting a boutique of roses. He put them in front of his parents' graves as Naruto and Sakura watched, holding hands. Mother, father, Sasuke said. I know it's been a long time. But I know the truth now of why Itachi did what he did. I miss you both just like I miss Itachi now. The villagers look at me like I imagine they must have looked at you. But I will strive to change their minds and restore the clan as a loved one that doesn't rely on hatred anymore. I have two friends here that never gave up on bringing me back no matter what. A couple tears leaked out of Sasuke's eyes, Naruto and Sakura couldn't help but tear up as well. They stood there silently until Sasuke was ready to go. How about we go and get some ramen? Naruto asked. Sasuke smirked. Still the same Naruto aren't you? You know it. Naruto said. Naruto you did have something healthy to eat while you were on your mission right? Sakura asked. Naruto hesitated. Uh, Sakura sighed. Alright, but you are having a healthy dinner tonight. She said. I'll make it myself. Yes ma'am, Naruto said in his submissive voice. Little did they know, someone was watching them from the forest. Team 7, now the next generation of Sanin went to Ichiraku after retrieving Sai and Yamato with the use of Naruto's shadow clones as well. Kakashi even decided to take the time off, leaving his own shadow clone to deal with the hookage work. Well, it's good to have the whole group together for Raymon, Kakashi said, as he saw in the middle between Naruto and Sasuke. Here's to life in a peaceful village. So Sasuke has returned to the village has he? The new root leader said. Yes sir. The Anbu who delivered the news said. Then it is time to make our move and avenge my father. Yes Lord Ranzo. Ranzo Shimura, son of Danzo, stood looking over at his men. It was a mixture of former members of Root and a few ninja from the Hidden Cloud in their white and red outfits and armored samurai from the Land of Iron. He looked a lot like his father had in his youth, though he did not possess any scars like Danzo. He'd never imagined that he would ever be in this position. His father had not been the most attentive parent. Danzo had only hired him as part of his duty to keep the Shimura clan intact. He hadn't loved his son. But now, Ranzo had a chance to succeed where his father had failed. We will eliminate Sasuke Ichiha first, then that treacherous clan will be no more. Then we shall work to get Naruto, Uzumaki, and Kakashi out of the way. I will be Hokage where my father couldn't. Yes Lord Ranzo. Ranzo, an old female voice came in. Ranzo looked and saw the speaker was Kaharu, one of the village elders. Her partner Hamura by her side. We must proceed carefully. After all, our target possesses the now. That's why I will get some for myself, Ranzo said. Then I will be able to fight him. Sasuke walked through the village, ignoring the many glasses of the villagers, as he did so. He'd spent the night at Naruto's house. He never would have done that back in the early days. At least not willingly. There had been one other time he'd spent the night there, when both of them had been stuck together by some sort of stick chakra substance. He and Naruto had to choose whose house they would sleep in and settled it through a game of rock-paper-scissors. Naruto had won, and Sasuke was forced to sleep on his dirty floor and listen to Naruto's snoring. At least he'd been able to sleep in Naruto's guest room and not be bothered by his snoring. The guest room wasn't as messy as Naruto's. Sasuke woke up in the morning and made his way out into the streets of the leaf. It was early so there were very few people out and about. He headed to the Hidden Leaf Nina Bank, where money had been deposited into the account that he'd long abandoned and left to gather dust in the Achiha clan's private vault. Ah Sasuke. The bank owner said. It's been a long time. Yes it has Mr. Faraga, Sasuke said. Zadom Yu Forage had been friends with Sasuke's father Fugaku. Sasuke doubted he had been aware of Fugaku's plan to overthrow the Hokage. 
After the Achiha massacre, Zatomu had donated some money to Sasuke. He was a kind-hearted man who cared about orphans and people in need. At least in most cases. It's good to see you again after so long, Zatomu said. I was relieved when I heard the news that you'd finally come to your senses and rejoined the village. That Uzumaki brat finally got through to you, huh? The bank owner chuckled to show he was joking, like many in the village he'd resented Naruto a few years ago, but now he was proud of the boy and guarded his account just like he did Sasuke's. It's good to finally be back, Sasuke said, managing a smile. Sorry about your arm, Zatomu said, noticing the stump. Are you gonna get a replacement like Naruto? Sasuke shook his head. I'm here to withdraw some of my money. Alright, you know. You'll be of age soon, and then you will get full access to the rest of the Achiha fortune, Zatomu said. Sasuke smiled. He withdrew the money then headed to the Nina real estate to look into buying a new house. That didn't go quite as smoothly. You should just move to another village or live on your own in the woods where you backstab rogue ninja. The real estate agent, a cross old lady said. I wouldn't sell you a house for a million ryo. Sasuke didn't flinch or otherwise react. How about two million then? He asked. She was unable to turn away that kind of money. Retirement here I come. She leaped for joy. Sasuke was given a key to one of the empty houses around the village. It was worth far less than what he'd paid for at only 500,000. Ah well, he'd done a lot of things, and he came from a clan that had been prejudiced against for a long time. He'd just have to tolerate it for the time being. The house had at least enough room for a small family of three or four. That could happen in the future, sometime. One day, I will redeem my clan, he promised. I'll restore it to a proud position in this village. He took a look at himself in the mirror of the bedroom he'd chosen. He removed his old headband with the scratch on it and put it on the dresser. The scratch would probably remind people of the Akatsuki. He'd get a new one. Also, he'd need something to cover his arm stump. Didn't need everyone's pity. Also, blue didn't really feel like his color anymore. He'd gotten this old Ichiha shirt from Granny Cat. He found a store in the village and got himself a black outfit like the one he'd worn in his Chunin exams and during his battle with Itachi. He also put in an order for some Ichiha crested clothes as well. That store didn't overcharge him at least, though the tailor didn't seem too welcoming. But that he went to meet Naruto for lunch. Sasuke, you didn't have to go through all that. Naruto said after Sasuke told him about his errands. We have Captain Yamato, he can make houses in just seconds. It's nothing, Sasuke said. I've got plenty of Ryo left and I'll get more when I turn 18. Well, let's go to lunch. They headed out to BBQ where they found Team 10 and Sai. Sasuke, you're back. Ino screamed for joy and waved at her old crush. Hey, Sasuke said, at least trying to be nice to his old fangirl. Um hello Sasuke, Sai said. Sai, Sasuke greeted the one who'd replaced him on Team 7. Shikamaru, Choji. Shikamaru looked at Sasuke for a moment, then sighed. Well this will probably be a drag. If Naruto thinks you've changed, I believe him. But you've got a lot to make up for, I never really liked you at all you know. I know, Sasuke nodded. And I hope to change that someday. At least so that you can forgive me. Well, maybe when you've protected the village for four years, Shikamaru said. Hey I think you just buy me a few meals sometime and we'll all be good, Chaji said in a teasing manner. Sasuke actually smirked at that. Well, it feels nice to be back. He and Naruto sat down. So Naruto, how are things with you and Sakura? Ino asked as she sat next to Sai. Going fine. She still hits me whenever I do something stupid, but other than that we're great. She said she had to work late today at the hospital with Grandma Tsunade and she's thinking of setting up some sort of network of medical clinics across the five nations so that we can share Grandma Tsunade's medical prowess with the others. Are you sure that would be a good thing? Shikamaru asked. It would be a drag if they were to take our village's most powerful healing strength and then turn against us. I agree. That might put us at a disadvantage, Sasuke said. Maybe, but if we want peace we should cooperate don't we? Chaji asked. The Akatsuki united us, now we have to make sure we don't start a fifth great ninja war. Lord Danzo always believed that peace between the five great nations was impossible, Sai said. Two years ago I wouldn't believe that all this was happening. He worked for Danzo? Sasuke asked, surprised. Sai nodded. He placed me on Team Kakashi in order for me to find you when we first met. It was he who ordered me to kill you to prevent Rachimaru from obtaining your body as a new vessel. HMPH, Sasuke huffed indifferently. There was an awkward silence. So Sasuke, why did you join Akatsuki anyway? Ino asked. Was it some sort of lie that Toby Urbito, or whatever his name was, told you? Sasuke stiffened. He told me the truth about Itachi. That's all I can really say. The truth? Ino asked. Sasuke was silent. He knew that he needed to keep the truth a secret. If word got out then it would be much harder to restore the Achiha clan's reputation. 
Before Ino could inquire further though, their meat was done cooking. Yahoo! Here we go. Choji immediately began stuffing his face happily. The rest of the friends began digging in and continued catching up. Sasuke listened to stories of all the action he'd missed since leaving the village to join Orochimaru and then Akatsuki. They told him about Sora, Hayden, and Kakazu, and the three tales, as well as their missions from before and after Naruto left the village. I certainly missed a lot, Sasuke said by the time they were done with their food. I wonder what would have happened if I'd chosen to stay when Sakura asked me to. Or I'd listen to Kakashi when he told me revenge doesn't solve anything. I wish I had done that now. Well, you're okay with me Sasuke, Choji said, as he held his stomach full of food Sasuke had paid for. That's nice of you Choji, Sasuke replied, glad he was on the right track with some of them at least. Well Choji's the nice guy on our team. But I meant what I said, Shikamaru said. You're gonna need to work hard in order to make up for what you've done. Sasuke nodded and began to walk home. As he did so he saw a familiar face. She stopped in front of him. Oh um hi Sasuke, Hinata said. Hinata, he greeted. I hope you are doing well, Hinata asked. Sasuke paused for a moment, well, I got myself a new home. So that's good. What do you plan to do now? Hinata asked. Well, I'm gonna redeem myself in the eyes of this village. Just like Naruto, Sasuke said. She flinched at the mention of Naruto's name and looked down. And Naruto. He's managed to change everyone's opinion of him. I want to do the same, Sasuke stated. That's a good goal, Hinata said. What about you? Sasuke asked. Hinata looked down again. I don't know now. For so long I've wanted to be with Naruto. She suddenly began to tear up. But now he is with Sakura and I don't know what to do now. Sasuke stood still, watching her. I'm sure you can find someone out there that can love you. But Naruto is the one who inspired me to change myself the most, Hinata said. He was a good influence on you then, Sasuke said. Like he was on me. He never gave up on changing the village's perspective of him. I won't either. You shouldn't give up either. She looked at him and saw a small smile. She smiled back. Thank you Sasuke, she said. He nodded and began walking past her. Sakura worked at the hospital with Lady Tsunade, Shizune wasn't with them, as she had decided to remain as an assistant to Kakashi in the Hokage office. Naruto and Sasuke had decided to spend the day with some of their fellow old classmates in the academy. The day had been busy with several ninja coming back with minor to severe injuries. There had even been a near fatal, fortunately both of the top medical ninjas had managed to save the man just in time. Then there was Sakura's latest idea to have started a network of medical clinics across the five nations. She'd been hard at work writing letters to each of the other cages which were now on their way. She had little doubt they would accept. But the only thing that worried her was the possibility that one of the nations might take their knowledge and turn against them. Ah well, they had to take that chance. If it worked, then things could ease tensions further and unite the nations in friendship. It was getting close to nightfall and her shift was almost over. Finally the end came and Sakura could go. Well, I'll see you later Lady Tsunade, Sakura said, as she made her way out. Good night Sakura, enjoy yourself for a couple of days. I'm sure everything will be just fine here, Tsunade said. She nodded and left. Tsunade returned to her lab where Madara's corpse still was, and his eyes containing the Rinnegan were floating in the chemical-filled canister to preserve them. Every so often they changed back to his eternal Manjikyu Sharingan. For a while she continued her experiments, so far they had been successful with creating new limbs for people. But could she perhaps replicate itself in another person? There had been another person who had been granted the Rinnegan somehow, Nagato. Now after some extensive research she now knew that Nagato had been part of the Uzumaki clan. Naruto's clan. The Uzumaki clan were distantly related to the Senjus and both the Senju and Ichiha, according to what she'd heard from Naruto after listening to the tale from Ibido, were descended from the Sage of the Six Paths himself. With all this information, Tsunade came up with a hypothesis. By acquiring DNA from both clans, Ichiha and Senju, one could awaken the supreme powers of the sage himself. Of course Naruto and Sasuke had both acquired theirs through receiving the sage's chakra in their near-death states. But this was likely how Madara had acquired the Rinnegan, when no other Ichiha had until Sasuke, and he only had one Rinnegan. Looking at Madara's body and a few blood samples nearby, she felt tempted to inject some of the blood into herself. Perhaps she could awaken the Rinnegan, as a descendant of the Senju clan, with the blood of an Ichiha, that might work. As she recalled Pain's invasion and how he had utterly demolished them, she wanted to do it. But another part of her felt that this sort of power should not be allowed to exist. Of course, they already did in the forms of Naruto and Sasuke. Tsunade shook her head. If word got out that anyone could awaken the Rinnegan by combining the DNA of two lines of the six paths, then there would be little godlike children in every corner of the five nations. If any of them were to go rogue with that power, disaster could ensue. It could be an even more destructive war than the last one. 
she would have to keep this hypothesis to herself. Leaving her lab, she locked the reinforced steel door. There was no way anyone who didn't have the key could get in. Even with a chakra imbued blade, for this steel was made from the same material as chakra armor from the land of snow, but at an even higher grade. The only way to get in was to get the key from her. No way that was gonna happen. Sunaid left the lab. As she did so, Madara's eyes changed. Not into the magic cue he'd had, but one made of swirls like the mask Abito had worn. A pattern that had existed long long ago. Sasuke tossed and turned in his sleep. The villagers all looked at him with disdain. Silently telling him to get out of the village. They will never accept you. A voice said. Who is there? Sasuke asked. You should have been the victor, the voice said. You should have been the one to crush Asura's legacy. Since you have made peace with his reincarnation, I will have to find another means. Sasuke awoke breathing heavily. He looked around his new house and let out a sigh. Just a dream, he said, laying back down. He joined his team for a mission the next day. They gathered in the Hokage's office, Naruto, with Sakura standing at his side faithfully and Sasuke a few feet away. Well, thank you all for coming, Kakashi said. I hope everything is going well with you three. We're fine, Sasuke said. Yeah. Now everything's back to normal around here. Naruto said. Yes, Sakura agreed. Well, let's hope it stays that way. Though there is a reason I called all of you here today. I've been getting reports of strange chakra all over the battlefield where the Ten Tails was, Kakashi said. But we sealed the Ten Tails back into the moon with Kagaya and Black Zetsu. Naruto said. Yes, but remember Sora. Sakura said. His father took a bunch of chakra that was left over from the Nine Tails attack here. Oh yeah. I wonder how Sora is doing. Naruto said. So you want us to investigate? Sasuke asked. Yes, if there is chakra from the Ten Tails in the area we need to get it under control before it affects the environment or anything else happens, Kakashi said. Since you three and I are the ones that managed to stop the Ten Tails, I thought it would be best to leave it to you. Sasuke can absorb it with his and Naruto can likely help as well. Oh yeah me and Sasuke will find that chakra and make sure it doesn't do anything bad. Naruto declared. Hey, what about me? Sakura asked. What am I supposed to do? But well, like Kakashi thought for a moment. Hmm. I don't know. Sakura looked down. Naruto and Sasuke both have those godlike abilities now. True she could heal practically any injury with her hundred healings jutsu, but she still felt like the lesser ninja. Hey, if we get injured, who's gonna be there to patch us up? Of course Sakura, Naruto put an arm around his girlfriend. If it weren't for you Kagaya would have evaded us and prolonged the battle, Sasuke said. We might have lost. Same thing back in the Chunin exams when we were both unconscious and protected. You're there for us when we need you the most, Sakura. That lifted her spirits. Oh you guys. She hugged Naruto, then pulled Sasuke into it. He smiled and joined in the team embrace. Let's go. Naruto said. They ran out to go on their mission, passing a familiar old man and woman. The Muramitakado listened and immediately made his way to the Shimura mansion with remarkable speed for one his advanced age. Kahari Yudatane at his side. The Sandin have left Ranzo, Kaharu said. Apparently some of Ten Tails Chakra might be swirling around the battlefield from the Ten Tails. They will be working to eliminate it, Hamura said. Ah good news. Though we must get to it first, Ranzo said. But before that, we must commence the operation to retrieve the Rinnegan. I've worked out a plan. Ranzo headed to the hospital where Tsunade was working, a basket in his hands. He saw a nurse at the front desk. Please, give this to Lady Tsunade, Ranzo said, putting on a friendly smile. The nurse blushed as she looked at him. Being a resemblance to his father in his younger years, Ranzo had the advantage of being considered handsome. At one sir. The nurse said. Ranzo left, smirking. Lady Tsunade, a delivery has arrived for you. One of the nurses said. It was a basket. A bottle of sake, and not just any sake, but one of the finest in the land of fire. As well as Tsunade's favorite food, chicken breasts, still in its container and ready to be cooked. Well that's a surprise, Tsunade said. Who was this from? I don't know. A handsome man that looked to be in his late twenties, the nurse said. Ah, well someone certainly went through a lot of trouble to give this to me. I'd best get this to a fridge so the chicken doesn't go to waste, Tsunade said. That would save her having to buy dinner. Tsunade took the basket and walked out with a smile. On the way she immediately opened the cork and began to drink it from the very bottle. Ah, just what I need. Haven't had this fine wine in years. She said before clutching her head. Uh, seems a bit stronger than I remember though. Her steps slowed, and then she suddenly lost balance and fell to the ground. The still open bottle poured its contents on the ground next to her, and the basket spilled its food. She lay there unconscious as two men in masks came upon her. One searched her and found the keys. He went to perform his task while the other took her off. 
Without alerting anyone in the hospital, the Anbu made it into the basement where Tsune had made her lab. He inserted the key and turned. Inside he immediately found what he was looking for and removed his mask, revealing his face as Ranzo's. He'd been raised for only two purposes in life, as Danzo's son. To help his father become Hokage and to preserve the clan's name. He'd not loved his father, as that was something that Danzo discouraged and emotions were useless and got in the way. But hatred coursed through Ranzo, he Ranzo would avenge his father and see his ways become integrated into the village. He seized the canisters with a Rinnegan, which again changed into the spiral Manjikyu and emitted a faint aura of darkness in the canister being held by a man who carried a small spark of hate in his heart. The Kashi sat in his office looking at letters now. There was a bit of fan mail here and there, most of it from kids here in the leaf, but there were people that admired him from out the other hidden villages as well. But there was one letter of great importance. From the Rakich. The Kashi opened the contents. The Kakashi Haddock the Sixth Okage. The world is certainly changing. When I was younger I never imagined all of us coming together. It's a miracle we are staying united even after the defeat of the Akatsuki. Anyway, I'm writing to propose an offer. Back when we met in the Land of Iron you reminded me that the Hyuga incident is still unresolved on your side. I know it was not you I betrayed with the peace negotiations at the time with my ambassador, but the third Hokage. Ah well I suppose I must apologize anyway. In penance for the loss of the Hyuga clan member, I offer a member of the cloud as a marriage candidate for the young Hyuga I once ordered abducted. I hear she is a skilled Kanoichi. I understand of course that you may see this as another attempt to try and acquire her, so I will allow my ninja to transfer to the leaf. Bring the matter to her father, and we shall see if he is willing. Bring the cards inside the envelope to him, and he can decide. The Kashi looked at the letter then back in the envelope. There were indeed several cards inside showing ninja from the cloud. Well, this will certainly be an interesting thing to bring up. Shizun. His assistant looked at him. If you would, send a runner to Lord Hiashi. At once Lord Hokage, Shizun said. She went to fulfill her task, Hiashi would likely be here within 40 minutes. Kakashi looked out the window. I wonder how my old team is doing. He returned to his paperwork. Then the door burst open, and an Anbu came in. Lord Hokage. We have an emergency. Hmm. Lady Tsunade is missing. No one has seen her since last night when she left the hospital. What? Kakashi exclaimed. And more, the Anbu continued. Her lab was broken into, and Madara's Rinnegan was taken. Kakashi sat there wide-eyed for a moment. Well, this certainly can't be good. Do we have any suspects? Not yet sir. Lock down the village. No one leaves until we find Lady Tsunade. At once. In the woods outside of the leaf, Ranzo led his reborn root Anbu and their allies from the land of iron and the cloud in the direction of the old battlefield. There were a dozen of them all together, all armed with tantos or full katanas. Ranzo's eyes were now replaced with Madara's in the Rinnegan form. Normally this would have killed anyone who didn't have a blood connection to the Sage of the Six Paths. But Ranzo had a secret weapon up his sleeve to be able to use it. Chakra War Food Pills, a special type of food pill that had only been invented just before the war. It allowed the one who consumed it to rapidly regenerate chakra that would have otherwise taken hours to recuperate. That it allowed ninja like Kakashi to use powerful techniques like the lightning blade dozens of times when they could naturally only do them a few times a day. This was the only thing preventing him from having any side effects from the legendary eyes. Tsunade was being kept in a cell underground with a chakra suppressor invented in the land of snow strapped into her, so she couldn't call on her vast abilities. Ranzo didn't plan to kill her, yet. If she got in his way though. Then he would. Soon, Sasuke Uchiha would be dead, and my father, Lord Danzo, as well all of our friends and family that he killed will be avenged. Ranzo declared. The three members of Team 7, now the new generation of Sanin, walked the battlefield where they had faced the Ten Tails, Madara and Ibido. They had also faced Kagaya as well, across multiple dimensions. Naruto activated Sage Mode, standing still for a few seconds, his eyes gaining orange lids and turning frog-like. Sasuke likewise activated his Sharingan and removed his eye patch for the I see it. He said. I sense it. Naruto said. They both sprinted in the direction of the chakra with Sakura following. The vegetation in the area has started to grow back, of course there had been mountains destroyed as well which would never come back. The three ninjas soon came close to the masses of chakra. Sakura could see it now too. Visible chakra floated in the air, higher than the average shinobi could ever hope to jump. But Naruto and Sasuke had other means to get up there or reach the chakra. There were at least half a dozen of them. Clouds of light red chakra like Ibido and Madara had been produced as Jinchurikis. Sasuke activated his Susanoo and sprouted its wings. He flew up, at the same time Naruto levitated upwards on his own, creating a Rasen Shuriken with one hand. 
His past couple months of training to perfect his techniques had paid off, now he could do not only the Rasengan without shadow clones, but the Rasen Shuriken as well. He threw it at the Ten Tails Chakra Clouds which vanished in a shower of white sparks. Sasuke meanwhile, went for the other half of the clouds. He extended the hands of Susanoo and absorbed the clouds into his body. For a moment, he transformed partially, his face, but not the rest of his body turning light green, and horns came out of head. Sasuke channeled the chakra back out and unleashed it in the form of his most powerful attack, named in honor of the Achiha clan's ancient ancestor, Indra Atsutsuki. Indra's arrow. A giant arrow made completely of lightning shot into the sky, possibly out into space. Eventually it would dissipate though, and no harm would be done hopefully. Sasuke's face returned back to normal as he slowly descended back toward the ground where Sakura waited. But suddenly, intense pain shot through the last Achiha. He screamed, it felt as though his very spirit were on fire. His Susanoo vanished and he plummeted toward the ground. Sasuke. Naruto shouted in concern for his rival and best friend. Sasuke. Sakura likewise yelled as she saw him falling. She ran and leaped, concentrating her chakra into her feet to maximize her leap. Even so she was just out of range. Sasuke would land in just a few seconds. Summoning, she shouted. In a puff of smoke, Kitsayu, a giant white and blue slug appeared. Sasuke landed on her back, which cushioned him like a trampoline. He bounced a couple of times. Naruto retrieved him and brought him back down to Sakura. Thank you Lady Kitsayu, Sakura said as she gently laid Sasuke on his back. You're welcome Sakura, the giant slug said. Do not hesitate to call upon me again if you need help. She vanished, leaving the new salmon alone. Sakura performed her medical chakra on Sasuke, but her hand was suddenly repelled. My medical chakra isn't working on him. Sakura said. Let me try. Naruto said. He put his hand on Sasuke who gritted his teeth. Naruto performed his own healing. The power he'd acquired after meeting the Sage of the Six Paths. It allowed him to save Might Guy, but not Abito Uchiha. Naruto prayed he could save this Uchiha. In his subconscious, Naruto heard Kurama. He took in the chakra of the Ten Tails and it recognized him as an enemy, the fox said. Now it is trying to destroy him from inside. Naruto felt pressure as he did his unique healing, the Ten Tails chakra was trying to repel him. I already beat you Ten Tails. Leave him alone. Naruto shouted as he put both hands on Sasuke. That did it. The chakra in Sasuke subsided. Naruto could still sense it inside him, but it wasn't doing any harm now. Sasuke's breathing and expression eased, but he fainted. He should be okay, Kurama said. But best keep an eye on him. Naruto nodded as the chakra around him vanished. He then put Sasuke on his back. Well that's done. Come on Sakura, let's go home. Yeah? Sakura said with a nod as she followed her boyfriend. The job catching him with Kitsayu by the way. Naruto added. Sakura blushed. She had thought that she would be totally useless again, but she'd saved Sasuke from falling to his death. As he'd said, she was there when they needed her the most. Everything would be fine. Or so she thought. As suddenly, a dozen figures leaped into the area around them. Sakura and Naruto gasped as they recognized three leaf anbu led by a man with brown hair and the Rinnegan in his eyes. Also with them were eight other people, four samurai from the land of iron and four ninja in white and red uniforms wielding katanas from the village hidden in the clouds. What's going on? Naruto asked. We're here for Sasuke Chiha. The man with the Rinnegan said. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.